The poker vlog takes us back to Las Vegas, this time specifically to the home of drunk tourists, homeless psychopaths, and classy strippers. You guessed it, Fremont Street. And on it, the golden nugget. We head inside and find ourselves at the cage buying enough chips to sit at a 2-5 game. Oh, what's that? We're just playing 1-2? Did I mention it's uncapped? Maybe we're the psychopaths. If you're a longtime subscriber to the vlog though, you'll remember the session Rampage and I played here where we personally lost a 5k pot and witnessed Rampage in a 12k one. Let's see if we can repeat that action. First hand of note, we looked down at ace queen offsuit from the small blind. The button straddles on and there's a bunch of limps to us and I raise it up to $15 and we get five callers. Six ways to the flop here with $77 and the pot gives us a pair which comes king, queen, jack. I lead for $20 here and only the button puts in the call so we're going heads up to the turn. Turn comes to 6 of club which is pretty much a blank. I decide to continue betting here for $30 and the button's not done with the hand just yet. He makes the call. The river comes to king of clubs and with $177 in the pot I decide to go for a pretty strange bet here. Looking to get to a cheap showdown here I bet $25 and the reason why is the button's a splashy opponent here so I think he'll call us with weaker queens. I also think that he's, if he has a king, he'll put in a large raise here and we can easily get away from the hand. The opponent doesn't make a very large raise though, he raises it up to a hundred dollars and his story doesn't make too much sense. I guess he could have a king, that would be the value that he is going for here with a raise. However, if he did head a straight or a flush draw here, he probably also would raise here in position on the button. So for that reason and given that he's a splashy player, I decide to pay him off here and get some information if I'm wrong. Sure enough, I am. He had king seven and was calling us with that, and he's gonna scoop this $377 pot right out of the gate. 1830 in our stack, we looked down at four or five of clubs from the big blind. The button straddles on, middle position raises it up to $15, and he gets four callers. We're here in the big blind, I put in the additional money, and we are off to a flop. Flop with $90 in the pot is a pretty great one for us, it comes 773, also the area code of my phone number from Chicago, so I'm liking this flop a lot here. Small blind leads out for $15 here, and I think a call is appropriate, so that's what I do. I toss in three red chips, and the middle position player does as well. Three ways to the turn here, which is a gin card for us, it gives us a straight, comes a six of hearts. Small blind continues to bet, this time for a hefty $100 into $135, and I take a second to pause here and think about my decision. Given that we have a straight here I think it is appropriate to go for the raise if he has a seven we want to get the money in here before a scare card comes on the river that's what I do I pop him up to 225 just a little bit more than a min raise and sure enough the middle position player gets out of the way small blind re-raises and rips it all in for $750 and pretty much a no-brainer decision for us here if he has us beat with a boat so be it we put in the call and we're off to a river which comes with three of diamonds doesn't change anything he shows four five for the straight as well and we're gonna chop this pot he's pretty surprised about it and so am i so second hand in we've already played a sixteen hundred dollar pot and this hand we looked down at ace king offsuit from the big blind the button straddles on there's two calls to me and i raise it up to fifteen dollars we get a lot of action here at the golden nugget we get three calls so we're four ways to the flop sixty dollars in the pot the flop comes eight eight deuce with two diamonds we have the king of diamonds in our hand here so i start with a bet for fifteen dollars and everybody puts in the fold easy game next hand in a note we have 1900 in our stack we look down at king queen from the button it's two limps to the cutoff who raises it up to 20 dollars and i put in the call that brings the other two limpers in as well we're going four ways to the flop flop with 83 in the pot comes 9 10 6 it gives us a gutter to the straight and additionally two over cards the cutoff starts with a bet for 20 dollars and i put in the call one of the middle position limpers puts in the call as well, so we're going three ways to the turn. Turn's a great card for us, it gives us top pair, comes the queen of hearts, middle position starts with a check, and the cutoff doesn't slow down, he bets $35 into this pot. I think a raise could be fine in some situations, but in this instance, I just put it in the $35 to see what happens with middle position. That brings in middle position as well, he puts in 35 and we're still three ways to the river. River comes the ace of hearts, which brings in king jack and the heart draws, middle position checks, the cutoff now gives up and checks and just in case one of them's trapping i decide to check back here and get to a cheap showdown middle position shows jack 10 cutoff shows king 8 for nothing and we're gonna win with our pair of queens here 248 soldiers coming our way
pocket jiggities now from the small blind. The button straddles on, the cutoff calls, and I pop it up to $20 here, and the big blind gets out of the way, but the cutoff puts in the call, and that brings in the button as well. So we're going three ways to the flop here, out of position with $60 in the pot, comes king, eight, four, two clubs. Action's on me, and I start with a 25% pot size bet here, and the cutoff gets out of the way and the button puts in the call so our heads up to the turn. Turn comes the 10 of diamonds and I just don't believe the button just yet so I fire for $35 and that actually gets the job done. He folds his cards and we're nice. We want to show the action player what we had. We have pocket jiggities. We expose him. He says nice hand and we're off to the next one. The action pauses for a second when we realize someone has just made the best hand ever created in No Limit Hold'em a royal flush. Take a second to take this in if you've never had one before in your life. I've personally had three. One of them was just in a recent vlog in Texas. If you want to check that one out, it's on my channel. I definitely recommend watching it. 2140 in our stack, we look down at pocket queens from the under the gun plus one position. The straddle's on and I raise it up to $20. Get three calls from the cutoff button and the straddle. So going four ways to the flop here with $83 in the pot. Flop's a good one for our range, but not our exact hand. It comes ace, deuce, three. To make matters worse, when the action gets checked to the straddle, he puts in $20 here, which is an interesting lead. I'm going to be going nowhere here, but I'm also not going to be raising. I put in $20 as well, and the other two opponents do as well, so we're still four ways to the turn. Turn comes the king of diamonds. It brings yet another overcard to our pair of queens. The straddle decides to check now, which is a very weird line. I'm not falling for anything here. I put in the check as well. The cutoff's done with this passive play. He raises it up to $70, and the button calls behind. This is what Mariano would like to call a Figo hand. I don't know what the heck is going on in here. The straddle gets out of the way. I'm not putting any more money into this pot. I fold. The river comes to 10 of clubs, and we're going to play it out here. The button shows ace, eight of diamonds, and he's going to scoop that pot. Pocket tens is the next hand to bless this vlog from the button. The middle position raises it to $20, and the cutoff puts in the call. He's the action guy to my right. We're not going to be playing for $20 here. I three bet it to $75. Middle position gets out of the way, and surprisingly, the cutoff does as well. I would have bet some good money that he wouldn't have gotten out of the way there. But I'm just happy to be going for the 3-bet here. Occasionally in the past, I would be flatting here, looking to flop a set. New year, new me. 2180 in our stack, we look down at ace-queen offsuit from the under the gun plus one position. The straddle's on as it has been all night, and I pop it up to $15. My left puts in the call, and the cutoff calls as well. And now the under the gun limper goes all in for $83. I think this could be a good spot to go for an isolation raise, given that the straddle is a weaker opponent. That's not what I do in the moment here. I just stick in the $83 indicating a call and that brings in the middle position player, but the cutoff gets out of the way. Three ways to the flop with one person all in comes 10, eight, deuce, two diamonds. No money in the side pot here, so I just start with a check and middle position checks behind. Turn comes the four of hearts, not changing too much. I check again and middle position does as well. The river's the deuce of spades, pairing the two. I check, middle position does again, and he shows ace king. That's not gonna take it down though. The straddle sucked out on both of us with a 10 on the flop. He's gonna take down that $272 pot and triple up. 2100 in our stack, we look down at ace jack offsuit from the big blind. Bunch of limbs to me and I pop it up to $17. We get called by the middle position, the cutoff, and the small blind. So going four ways to the flop with ace high here. Flop with $72 in the pot gives us a pair. It comes queen, jack, eight with two clubs. When small blind checks to us, I decide to go for a $20 bet. And that brings in the middle position and the small blind. The cutoff out of the way, we're three ways to the turn. $132 in the pot comes the king of diamonds. Not the best card in the world here as it brings in another over card to our jack. Additionally, ace 10 now makes a straight. When the small blind checks to us for a second time here, I decide to go for a little pot control and I put in a check. Middle position quickly checks behind, so we're off to the river. River pairs the king, it comes at king of clubs. The small blind does something strange and just open mucks his hand, so that brings us just heads up with a middle position player here. I decide to start with a check and see what he does here. I'm debating calling a bet here, as I don't really know if his line makes too much sense. I guess he could have a club draw, but he doesn't give us any option to make a key roll call here when he checks behind. We table our ace jack, and he mucks. Our ace jack's gonna win this $132 pot here, and we throw the dealer a bone for his good dealing. Ace 10 of hearts is the next hand to bless this vlog. We're in the cutoff position, and I raise it up to $13. 
We get called by the button and the big blind, so going three ways to the flop. $40 in the pot, the flop is outstanding. Let me repeat that, it's an outstanding board here, very favorable for us. Comes ace, 10, eight, two spades. We're loving life with top two pair here, and the big blind checks it over to us. When I'm in between two players or monkey in the middle, I like to start with a check. That's what I do here to go for a little deception, and the button takes the lead and bets $15. Big blind puts in the call here, and with a lot of draws on board, like king, queen, king, jack, nine, jack 97 a lot of spade draws I decide I need to bump it up here $15 is not enough money I go for the $55 raise and the button pretty quickly calls big blind has had enough of this hand he gets out of the way so going heads up out of position to the turn if the flop was exceptional the turn was immaculate it comes the deuce of diamonds nothing comes in we're still with top two pair here I guess the button could have pocket eights but that's about it for that reason I go for a pretty chunky pretty sizable bet here for $115 the button throws in a lot of red chips here indicating a call and the dealer's going to bring out the river if the flop was outstanding the turn was immaculate that means the river here is heavenly it comes the 10 of clubs absolute gin card for us here and we boat up it makes it less likely that we have ace 10 here so if the opponent has something like ace jack through ace king he's probably gonna have to pay us off here opponent only has around 220 left in their stack there's around 400 dollars in the pot it's a pretty no-brainer shove for us here and the button goes into the tank. Ultimately though, the opponent mucks their cards, so we're not gonna get an extra $220 of value here, and I later tell the opponent that I'm making a vlog, and it'd be nice if they told us what they had. They say sure, they folded ace-queen, and I think that's a pretty amazing fold there on that specific runout. Nice hand, nice hand. We catch this next hand here with 6-5 offsuit and a 6-way limp pot and the flop is ace. Three, four. The action checks to me here and with the spade draw on board, we still just have six high, so we're gonna take a free card and see if we can't improve. Turn is just that, it comes with seven of clubs, so we have the nuts, bang. Middle position leads out for $5, which is pretty strange, and there's three callers to me here, and that's not gonna do it for us. We need to pop it up here to get some protection against the spade draws. I make it $25. Four players aren't done with the hand, they wanna see what the river card is, and they throw in some chips. The river comes the queen of diamonds, which doesn't change anything. We still have the nuts on this board and now the hijack bets $30. That's not going to do it for us. We jam all in, but wait, there's a problem. The guy who bet $30 had around 120 left in his stack and I was so concerned with him that I didn't realize that the other player in the hand, the German guy that I've been talking to all night, had around $2,000 in his stack. It's not the end of the world because we do have the nuts, but if I knew he had $2,000 in his stack, I wouldn't have raised so large. This looks so strong in my spot. Luckily, he gets out of the way and he makes some kind of comment afterwards letting us know, holy crap, you shoved for 2k there. Apparently, the guy who bet $30 also thought that was a strong play because he throws his cards into the muck and we're going to scoop that pot. Phew. Good thing we actually had the nuts there and the German guy didn't have us cooler there. That would have been pretty disgusting. Next hand to note, we look down at Queen Jack of Diamonds, and the hijack raises it up to $10 pre. I put in the call, and the button and the small blind do as well, so going four ways to the flop. Flop is Queen High, comes Queen 5 10 with two hearts, and the hijack leads for $15. With top pair, I make the no brainer call, and the button gets out of the way. The small blind puts in the call. Three ways to the turn here with $87 in the pot comes the Five of Diamonds. Doesn't change too much. We have two pair here with a Jack Kicker. The hijack decides to bet $15 again here and I think that's too small of a bet. I want to get a little bit more value here from some heart and straight draws. I bump it up to $45. Small blind gets out of the way but the hijack's not done with the hand. He throws in $30 more and we're off to the river. River comes the 10 of spades which is not an ideal card here. The reason I say that is he could be calling us light here with a pair of 10s. He's the type of opponent to do so. When that card comes in here it's not the best card in the world for us to see here. He does decide to check and I actually check behind. I'm not too sure any other hand that we have beat would call another bet here on the river. If he had hearts or a straight draw, he would just fold to a bet here. And additionally, if he had a better queen or a 10, he would call. Therefore, I don't think a bet on this river makes sense. For that reason, I check behind. Sure enough, he shows us the bad news. He got there on the river. He shows Jack-10 offsuit, and good thing we didn't bet there and give him a little bit more value. I'm pretty happy with my check behind there, evaluating the situation, thinking about what hands would call me that I have beat, and additionally, what hands would call me that have me beat. 
Last hand of the night, we have 2400 in our stack. We look down at king queen offsuit from middle position. It's a great hand. I raise it up to $15, and the player on my left, the cutoff, and the button all call, so we're going four ways to the flop. Flop's a pretty decent one. It comes ace king five with two spades. We have middle pair here, and we also have the queen of spades in our hand. With a bunch of other players in the hand, I decided to start with a check. I think a pretty large bet is also fine, just repping our range. But when I check, all the other opponents check as well, and we're off to a turn. Turn comes a seven of spades, which gives us the second nut flush draw. Obviously, a king queen of spades would be a very nice hand to have here, but that's not what we have. I decide to start with another check here, and it folds around to the cutoff, the German player in the other hand who bets $20. $20 is a pretty small bet. I think you'd want to bet a little bit larger to charge the other spade draws. Additionally, if he had an ace in his hand, he'd probably want to bet large to price out the other spade draws as well. For that reason, I decide to pop him up to $65. He thinks about it for a little, postures, and then puts in the additional red chips, indicating a call. So our semi-bluff here on the turn is going to get called. We're going to need to hit a spade here, provided he doesn't have the king of spades in his hand. The river does not give us such luck. It comes a 10 of diamonds. It doesn't really change anything. We still have second pair with the queen of spades blocker. We didn't bet the turn to give up on the river. We've effectively turned our pair of kings into a bluff here, just not believing the story that he's trying to tell. I bet $65. Just like we don't believe the cutoff, he doesn't believe us as well. He raises us up to $200. The action's back onto us, obviously. Because we're playing 1-2 so de-stacked here, he has around $1,600 in his stack. We have some evil ideas. We could potentially go for another raise here and rep the queen high straight. But ultimately, cooler heads prevail here, and I toss my cards into the muck. I later asked him off the table in German, pleading with him to tell me what he had. He said he had jack nine of spades, and the only way he was folding is if I shoved, obviously repping the queen or the king of spades there. Nice hand, sir. Nice hand. Maybe we could have gone for the all-in shove there and maybe made a sick play for the vlog, but I'm not that sick yet. You'll have to watch the next videos and see if I can make a big play like that in the future. If you guys appreciate me even thinking about a bluff like this, definitely leave a like on this video. Really appreciate it. When all said and done, we rack up our monstrosity of a chip stack and we head to the cage. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. We got into this game for 2,000 big ones, out of the game for 2214. Ran into a couple vlog watchers. You guys know who you are. Thanks for watching. As always, like the video, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.